Hi friends and welcome back to my channel. Today's video I have been dreading making it for a little while because it's not my usual videos here on YouTube so you might find it a little bit odd but um, if you look back far enough five years ago to be exact you will see that I have a breast cancer video sharing my journey with it how I found out that I had that I diagnosis how I was handling and I went over a little bit on my double mastectomy and the procedure and all of that and just kind of like the mindset overall well turns out that five years later i was about to be done with this whole process almost able to check out from my yearly visits to my surgeon until we found out that the cancer metastasized and um, so this video is mainly to um, explain the signs you know of, of that um, how I found out but also because I still have feedback from that very first video on the breast cancer uh, on women just sharing how much the video was helpful for them I just I'm hoping to provide the same support and to just be a resource for faith here and to mainly share how that helps me to face these adversities and um, and still keep up with a smile keep on living and trying to be my best every day so with that said i will resume hopefully normal activities here on the channel soon um, i do have plans to film a couple of other videos today too so you should expect that but for today we are just gonna talk about metastatic bone cancer so ladies for more information on my breast cancer the type all the procedures and all of it i will make sure to link both videos that i have available here on youtube and just for the sake of timing here so i don't go deeply through you know all of it i would just focus on this time of my life in this diagnosis and then you guys can watch those videos on your own if you want to i want to start by just letting you guys know that I chose like back then you would see that I chose not to do the hormone therapy that was recommended by my oncologist when I had the breast cancer diagnosis the side effects didn't weigh out they were like not to me not really promising and I see a functional there um, a functional doctor that that does blood tests every three months or so sometimes I skip them um, but for the most part I do have a doctor that I see and that looks at my blood tests every so often sometimes she puts me on estrogen blockers sometimes she takes me out of it so always measuring my blood type my blood tests you know sometimes I'm low on iron sometimes I'm low on this or that but for the most part I take some supplements and um, I keep up keep my eyes on the blood tests just to make sure that things are okay which i have not had an appointment with her yet post cancer she knows about it we just haven't been able to this has been like as of last week so we are still due for a blood test and i want to or an appointment and i want to um ask her more so of like what did we miss how did we miss this and um what are the signs that could have possibly been on my blood test that we just didn't see coming obviously there's no blaming on anybody this this is something that could have just quickly happened and not shown you know blood uh, cancer cells on my blood tests um so it, it just is what it is i'm just trying to understand a little more of like how that could have you know happened being that i am doing you know all that i can to prevent this from coming back with that being said, um, about a week ago or two weeks ago now, I started feeling um, some pain on my hip bone and I am pretty active. If you guys follow me on Insta, you know, I do my yoga and I do um, train. I lift with a personal trainer weekly and I just thought maybe I did something, you know, that my body didn't like or maybe i just bumped my hip on somewhere and didn't even notice and now there's just this lingering pain but the pain was lingering for more than like three or four days and i was just taking a leave for it um and then it was wednesday night about 11 p.m i was getting ready to go to bed and the leave i had taken a leave earlier that evening before we had a commitment and usually it works within like an hour 
maybe two tops and it had been like four or five hours since I've taken two pills and it was just not doing anything. I was lying in bed, like pretty much in pain. And I texted my doctor and I'm like, I'm not sure you're going to see this right now, given that it's like 11 PM, but I am feeling this pain. I'm taking a leave. It just feels very swollen in this area here. And I just wonder if I should go to the emergency room. With that said, I did have a cyst in my ovary about 10 years ago when I had a appendectomy surgery done. And the doctor, when he was going in to remove the ap appendix, he found this big cyst on my ovary. He popped, he drained. And after that, I had some like pain in that same area. And I just assumed there was the cyst coming back. I'm like, maybe the cyst came back and it's just swollen and it's going to pop inside of me. And she said, you know, I'm afraid that this could be something more visceral and it will uh, develop overnight. So I would feel more comfortable if you go to the emergency room right now. And so that's what I did. Packed my little bag and didn't alarm anybody, just went to the emergency room. And in there she was examining me, the doctor, and she didn't really, like as she was, you know, pressing on my stomach, lower belly, I didn't feel any pain until she touched the bone. And then I'm like, ouch. And she's like, also oh, the pain is in the bone. I'm like, yes. She goes, well, that's weird, which I felt like too, but maybe I'm like, maybe I just bumped somewhere and like I said, don't remember. Well, long story short, she ordered a CAT scan. Um, we The CAT scan results came back pretty quickly. That's the beautiful thing about going to the ER at like 11 p.m. because then there's really not a whole lot of people. She was very straightforward, very blunt. She said, there's cancer um, in your bones. There's two lesions in there, in your hip bone, like your pelvic bone. And I'm like, oh, what? <laughs> and she's like, yes, there's cancer in there. So we're going to do another CAT scan on your chest area just to see what's going on. And I'm like, wait a minute. I actually am a breast cancer survivor. I did. Um, I had a double mastectomy um, five years ago. This is my five year anniversary and I never had any reoccurrence. I'm like doing fine in, you know, I'm like, I don't know just letting you know that you're not going to find anything in here because I've removed my breasts. And she's like, oh, so that's what happened. And I'm like, what happened? And she said, well, the cancer metastasized in your bones, which means now I know that means that the cancer um, left the original site and traveled through my bloodstream and found another place in my bones. So Long story short, she ordered the CAT scan of my chest and then we did that and it came back with another spot on my spine on the T1 bone up here, which luckily I don't feel any pain up here. Not, I mean, maybe a little soreness once in a while, but really not nothing compared to my pelvic bone. And uh, so she so she told me that there's another spot. I want you to see an oncologist as soon as possible and, you know, go from there. So I was basically released. You know, they gave me some pain medicine. I drove myself back home and slept the night, then just broke the news to my husband the next morning, which was not very pleasant, obviously. The time that I was left in the ER, I was obviously with my phone just by myself doing all kinds of Googling and trying to understand what is this, you know, the metastasis and all of this. Apparently this can happen to like only 20 to 30% of women who have breast cancer. So do not um, get scared because it's a, it's, it's, not very common um, for it to happen. Even another question too, even on tamoxifen, there's still a 7% chance that you, this could happen to you plus all of the, all of the side effects. So with that, I just want to let you guys know that I did go through my functional doctor to make sure the tamoxifen was not right for me. So we did very much extensive testing to see how my particular body and my organism um, works and how the meds work and what the pathway of it is. And basically it just 
for myself and my body, it just wouldn't be doing what it was supposed to do. So I just want to leave this out there in case you're wondering. I think this is a very personal choice. People going through this should be able to do their research, work with whomever they feel comfortable with, and just choose whatever whatever treatment or follow-up is the best for them. We Nobody has the right answers. Like there's not a for sure drug out there that would, that ma would make sure that this would never happen again. So I have a very, I'm in peace with the decision that I made back then. And I'm in peace with my diagnosis too. So with that said, uh, we made an appointment with my oncologist. And then I also made another appointment with a different oncologist from the ER, the same hospital, the, the ER that I went to, just to have two different opinions. And I think it's valid. I think, um, everyone should do this because it's it just helps you to kind of like have different people pitching in the same uh, diagnosis and it's just nice to have more minds thinking about it that was a very beneficial thing to have so with him he said there's not uh, chemotherapy is not recommended for this type of cancer because mine was highly hormonal. So my first, my original diagnosis was 98% uh, estrogen and I can't remember the percentage of progesterone positive, but um, it was those two hormones. And so this therapy that we are going to do, this treatment is the one that is recommended. So essentially what I'm going to do or what they're doing to me is um, we are going to shut down my ovaries, meaning I am going to be put into menopause right now through shots. The other option was to do the surgery, which could cause other problems too. So if it's not, if there's a different path, it's best. And I chose that just to have the shots. And then we're going to get a bone strengthener, which is the Exgiva. I'm just trying to remember to like, you know, Exgiva will be a support, supportive treatment to the actual combating meds that I will be getting. So Lupron are the shots that I'm taking. And then I have two different pills letrozole and ribocyclib, which is the drug, which mine is Iskali, Iskali, Kaskali. Anyway, uh, this, this combination has been shown to be the best cocktail for my diagnosis, for my type, you know, just being pre premenopausal and then I'm going to be thrown into a postmenopausal and in, in order to receive this. So my second opinion also was very clarifying and in how these guys work. And essentially back in the day, they would give the uh, Lupron and the Letrozole in combination. And then if the person did not respond or when the treatment sort of stopped working, they would introduce the ribocyclic drug, which is, you know, it would make it a little, give patients a little more time. And then they finally figured out why don't we just start the ribocyclic right off the bat and just give all of these drugs together. And so that way we don't wait and see what's needed. It's just kind of there the whole time. And she has a lady who has been in this same cocktail for six years and she's thriving. I think my main goal right now, which my original oncologist has said, is to live my life the best that I can. So meaning I just want as little disruption as possible and just keep on being able to work out, do my daily things and just live life and be able to work and, you know, and not be in pain. The part of it that was very hard for me in this second diagnosis was the pain. Have, having to deal with the pain of it was has been pretty humbling because I've never had to deal with that pain um, with my breast cancer. Uh, even through surgery, which is a pretty aggressive type of surgery, you know, the mastectomy, I was able to manage that with like Tylenol and maybe a little, you know, Tramadol or something, but just very... Uh, it was it's just very smooth the process of was very smooth so this time around it was just hard to deal with the pain because it was so much so that i couldn't even put my pants on like standing up like my legs could not balance um it was just so uh, painful that i had to sit down to put my pants on to put socks on 
you know, the type of thing that at 43 years old, you are not thinking that you're going to have to deal with. It's just more of so like, you know, many, many decades um, ahead. Um, and that was a humbling feeling and just me thinking, God, I'm fine with this, but I would like to be without any pain. And so after a couple of days, then my uh, oncologist gave me Travadol. I do have a sort of, a, it's not an allergic reaction, but kind of like a sensitivity to Vicodin, you know, opioids. And I would rather not take them just because I don't like how my body reacts to them. So we just always try to look for alternatives. And this seemed to be something that works. Every now and then I am taking it to sleep. You know, he did say take it as needed. And hopefully once all of these meds are working together and finally kick in, I won't need the pain meds anymore. Like it would all be able to work together. So, so far I did have my infusions already about a week ago, like five days ago. I had the Lupron, which is the medicine that's going to shut my ovaries. And I don't know if it's a med called a medicine, but... And I had the Exgiva, which is a, in, an injection on my underarm, which really stings. I'm one to like, I really am not super sensitive to pain. I feel like I have a high tolerance for pain. And this was just not a fun one. The other one is on the butt, which is also not fun. And it does, it did leave me with a little bit of a soreness around where the shot was given. But other than that, I really have not experienced anything else. Aside from a little fatigue, I felt like ever since this diagnosis, I, felt I was feeling very fatigued and I still do. It gets to about like 5, 6 p.m. I kind of hit a wall and I just been going to bed early and just trying to listen to my body and do the things that um, it tells me to. So with that said, then last week after I took my, I'm still waiting on the pills. The pills had to be approved by insurance, just a huge bureaucracy. The copay was so high. I mean, all the things that just makes my heart break for pa cancer patient out, patients out there because not only you have to deal with this diagnosis, which not everybody deals with it in a, you know, in a peaceful way, uh, but also you have to deal with how you're going to pay for this treatment, which is just very sad, very sad how it has to be dealt with. Luckily, we are in a good place right now. Our insurance is kicking in. I'm going to reach my deductible and things are going to be taken care of for a while. And then we're going to figure out once, you know, once that prescription expires, what we're going to do. So for now, my goal is to be seeing my oncologist every month until we make sure that this treatment will be working for me in doing what it needs to be done. There's different dosages of this medicines that can be given, you know, more or less of. And so just watching how my body is going to tolerate the treatment, what my side effects will be. There's very minimal side effects on each one of them. I will try to list the medicines in here on the box for you guys to check it out. But they gave me all the paperwork on it and just, you know, explaining what it's used for, when it's given, how it's given, you know, in the form of pills or shots, like the side of the possible side effects some side effects that are more common and greater occurring in greater than 30% and then less common 10 to 29% of people. And he said, for the most part, you shouldn't really experience very much of it. So after sharing this news on Instagram, I have had a lot of ladies reach out and some of them told me that they are in the same cocktail of meds and they've been, you know, great for like three years or so. There's not a lot of stats that are like much beyond that kind of six year mark. However, I want to say that before this, um, this ribocyclic ribocyclib was given with the other cocktail of meds, um, the chances of survival, the survival rate was not very great. And now there's better chances. And not only that, but women are surviving, feeling better, living lives normally, which that's my goal too. I don't want to be in a bad, you know, making other people miserable, making myself miserable. But then again, it's God's plan which this is another part of this video that I feel like I wouldn't do justice to myself, not to mention the fact that I feel really peaceful and really, um, you know, still joyful in this chaotic, you know, upsetting news. 
is because I know who's in charge. And I think that my faith really speaks louder. It's, it's, it's like God has brought me here to this point and is having me face this news and almost like a test of faith. It's like, how much do you trust me? If I proclaim everywhere that I trust Jesus and I trust God and when I face something like this, I get scared to death, I, that wouldn't be true. You know, I wouldn't really have faith. Not to say that it's not normal to be scared. It's normal. This is scary. This is scary. I mean, there's, especially for moms of like little children or, you know, it's, it's not an easy diagnosis to receive for anybody. And I'm not here to judge any reactions. We, we really, truly don't know how each person's going to react and everything is valid. I'm just saying that having faith really has helped me to have peace with this. Regardless of what happens, I know that he's in control. He has shown me uh, through and through over and over in my life that he's got me, you know, through the trenches, through the valleys, through the peaks, through victories and losses and failures and successes. It's God's being there. And those, those low times really have taught me a lot. And I think they're very valuable. They have a lot of value. If nothing else, this time has really opened my mind or my eyes to how am I spending my time in? Like if I only have an X amount of years left, which by the way, nobody knows when they're going to die. Uh, not to be morbid, but we don't, you know, we can go out and get in a car crash and boom, that's it. So this is like, it shouldn't scare us. It, it's He's the one who has the ultimate, um, you know, who pulls the trigger and, and, you know, gives the ultimatum. But what I'm trying to say is that how it opened my eye to how I'm spending my time and what what is it that I want to leave in this world? Like if I only know, like what a privilege, first of all, to know that, you know, you kind of like don't have a whole lot of time left. And maybe I'm wrong, but just thinking about it, it, it makes me think about how I want to spend this time, what I want to do, what are the things that are important? Why do I work so hard for? What is it that I'm trying to accomplish? What are the things that I'm chasing with this? You know, am I chasing fame, success? Am I chasing a fat bank account? What's my legacy? Or do I want to leave a message here or like an experience of leaving that people uh, you know, can get something out of it? I don't know. It just really makes you think about how you're living your life. And I think that's really, truly a gift, to be honest. So for now, you guys, I think that's it. I do have like a big packet of like materials in here that I go over. And obviously this is going to be an ongoing thing. There's no date for the treatment to be over. Like you have 10 sessions of chemo and X amount of sections, sessions of radiation, which by the way, we are doing an MRI on my spine too. This is the one that he was the most worried about because he could uh, it has the potential to be more damaging than the hip one uh, because it could be close to the spinal cord and he just wants to make sure that it's not. If that spot is really uh, in bad shape, then we might do a couple shots of radiation in that bone and, and that would be you know part of the treatment as well. One thing that I've learned though with the second opinion, which I had so many more questions too that were like boiling up, I was like, you know, if why wait to do the radiation? Like if this is something that could be compromising in the future, why don't we just go ahead and, and radiate it? And she said, well, you can only radiate a bone once. And so if it's quiet, we leave it alone. If it starts moving, that's when we do the radiation. Because if later on, if you radiate it right now, and then later on that cancer starts growing again, you can go back and radiate it again, which was news to me. I did not know how that works. And I don't know if that works the same for organs, um, but that's kind of how it is for the bone. So many reasons why, you know, I did ask a lot of questions, which I can't um, seem to remember all of them. I think that I got through the most with you guys of what I wanted to say. Um, another thing is like, my life as far as working out and doing things should remain the same for, um, you know, 
for the time being and he just said listen to your body if obviously your hips hurting don't be doing squats don't be doing like balancing poses or whatever and this is something that it kind of shook me too because I felt so great last week after being in pain for a few days. I'm like, yay, I can finally work out again. So I went for a workout session and then the next day I felt great. I went to yoga, which is a very strenuous workout. It's a, it's like a Bikram uh, practice. It's very hot and a lot of balancing poses, lots of stretching, which feels great. But I did feel my hip yesterday and I'm, my guess is that that wasn't like the smartest thing ever. So just relearning how to take things slow and even though my body feels good, I just feel like going for the kill. I need to keep in mind that, you know, my bones are a little bit compromised right now and I just need to take it easy. And it's hard to make that brain body connection when you want to do things and you know you're capable of because you've done it before. It's almost like aging, you know, it humbles you. Um, so just gonna try to take it um, easy and take one day at a time and see how my body reacts. And another thing is to be in tune with your body. If there's another message that I want to leave here is definitely to don't ignore the pains. You know, if there's something that is a little bit odd and this pain is lingering, you know, and it's like sometimes we just pop a pill and we're good. But if if you're popping pills and the pain's still there, there's something to be told and something that your body's trying to tell you, listen to it. Because I think that in cases like this, you know, days or weeks can really make a difference in how fast you start treatment. Like my, I take it that it was very serious because my doctor was like, we're starting treatment right away. We're not going to wait. And so I'm like, okay, I'm down. And I accept that in all of the things. So anyway, I hope that you guys, if you're watching this and you're going through a metastatic cancer, organs or bones or whatever, do share your experience here. If you want to, sh if you feel led to, if you led to um, share some of the side effects that you are having, I feel like this community or this video in particular will be shared on my Instagram. And I want it to be a resource for people to come and be able to just find information in here. Obviously, never substitute this information for your doctor's information but I think sometimes it's good to hear from other people going through the same thing because we all experience things in a different way and I think it's like oh if I'm feeling this way somebody else does just so I know that this is like a side effect that's possible I don't know I just feel like it really helps this sense of community and it's such a gift to be able to share that here with you guys so with that, I think I've said it all. I might have left some things out, but if I do, I will make sure to leave it in the description box. Thank you guys so much for the thoughts, the prayers. If you have been some of the thousands that have reached out through Insta Instagram, I have nothing but gratitude in my heart to share. I have not been able to get to everyone, but I hear you, I see it, and I thank you so much. And I, I really just pray that God gives you double, triple blessings that the ones that you are wishing upon me and, and just know that he's in charge of all things and he wants what his plans are better than ours. Even though we think that ours are so good, he has even better ones, which is hard to believe, but it's true. So keep that in your heart and things are going to be okay. So I will see you next week with a brand new video on some handbag, um, review here that you guys have been asking for for a while. Talk to you soon, guys. Um beijo. Tchau, tchau.